so what was the spin you wanted to put on it for 2019? You, you know, obviously, there, there was the core, the roots of it, the, yeah. the sort of feminist the DNA, as DNA. I like to call it, yeah. Right, but what was the 2019 spin and what's the Elizabeth Banks spin? You know, I felt like there was a way to do an action movie from a from a different lens, from my from my perspective. For it's a very uh, simple, for instance, women do not typically walk into the room and immediately start fighting. <laughs> we don't walk into rooms with our, and like fists up. We need to use strategies in our lives to avoid violence for the most part. And so, my angels who are not trained assassins, this is not they're not John Wicks. They're not Jason Bournes, they're not James Bonds. They have a team for a reason. And being underestimated becomes their superpower. The mantra the entire time I was making the movie was that the women fight smarter, not harder. And so it's really interesting when you're putting together an action set piece when you're trying to avoid violence because you, you end up using all kinds of different things to get through the scene that you probably don't see all the time in action movies because most action movies, like a guy comes in, you know, in Mission Impossible, a guy walks into the bathroom, pushes his sleeves up or takes his jacket up, flexes his thing, and like comes at the camera, <laughs> you know? We do that too, by the way. But only after we've exhausted some other really interesting uh, shenanigans. How did you go about getting ready to, to shoot a movie that would obviously have a lot of complexity in setting up these incredible action scenes? Yeah, I had a great lesson in making a musical. <laughs> because musical numbers and action set pieces are actually designed in a very similar way. And the thing about musical numbers, you do everything in prep. So you have to choose the song, you have to, especially in Pitch Perfect, we rearrange everything, we assign parts, we do all the choreography. So for me, working with the stunt coordinator is like working with the choreographer. I need to understand where all the actors are gonna be in space and time so that I can make a camera meet them. And you have your bars and you have to also plan for like, what can I take out of this? If it's too long, like what 16 bars, 24 bars, et cetera, eight bars can I remove in case at the end of the day, I don't like how long this went. And the fact of the matter is that making an action set piece is a little bit easier than doing a musical. Because <laughs> I only had one car to explode. You put seven cameras on it, you explode it one time, the car's toast. You move on. <laughs> There's nothing else you can shoot. I, I wanted to direct feature films and I was sort of working towards doing that. Um, I took every opportunity that would come my way. I, the very first thing I directed actually was a short film for Funny or Die starring Adam Scott. And then I directed, um, I directed other shorts. I directed something for the Farrelly Brothers. And I ended up directing a PSA called Just a Little Heart Attack for the American Heart Association. I have been doing this for 17 years and I consider my career my film school. Um, I've been on a lot of movie sets and worked with a lot of incredible directors. I've also worked with a lot of uh, some directors that I don't consider as extraordinary. And you learn as much in those experiences, if not more, about what you know, what actors sort of need and what's required on uh, in terms of leadership on a on a set. When you think about what has been put out in media throughout history, it's mostly from a cisgendered white male perspective. And so everything that's not that feels a little bit fresher. So it feels like pretty good business. My real plea is for men to have enough empathy to go see movies starring women. Because I've been asked to go see movies starring men my entire life and happily have done so and I don't know why men don't return the fucking favor. Yeah. <laughs>